Did you feel pressured playing such a well-known well known gangster? Um, How did you tackle it? I, 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 I didn't... What I did was I read a couple of books, I watched some biographies on Meyer, Mickey, The Con, read the script, listened to um, some music. Uh, I didn't really feel pressure. Usually I just feel pressure if I'm like underprepared or something like that, but I felt really prepared for the role, so I didn't really feel that pressure. What I did feel that I was just talking about before was, you know, the first day I thought I was gonna get fired, I was like, Frank Darabont picked the wrong fucking guy, this is bullshit, I'm gonna get fired, why did bother bother? back home to New York, <laughs> talking myself out of it. And then at the end of the day, he pulls me over to the side, he goes like this, he goes, oh, now I know I got the right fucking guy. And then I was like, this with the weights. <laughs> there goes the weights. <laughs> but that was that was the pretty much the extent of the, the pressure, you know. But he was a very quirky character and like different man Yes. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah, he washed his hands between like 50, 60 times a day. It actually saved him once from being killed. Um, you know, like I've said before, the thing with Mickey was that he he strived to be a better, better person. He had a first grade, second grade education. You know, he learned how to read, he learned how to write. He um, went to etiquette classes. He had like word of the day. You know, he, 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 he tried to dress really well and present himself as well as an unpolished man could do that, kind of like myself. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, he, he was he was definitely a different guy. And I, I think, you know, at the end of the day, people keep asking me, like, how did you play this this monster? And the truth of the matter is, like, I didn't look at him like a monster. I thought that Mickey, from reading and from what I saw, was that he was, like, actually a guy who you would like to hang out with. I mean, he was a fun guy. He liked meeting everybody in his club. He liked shaking everybody's hands, taking pictures, welcome here, being in the limelight. He he enjoyed the, being that guy. And, you know, the thing is, when you cross Mickey, then, you know, you're done. But... How do we transcribe? Uh, I'll kill you. <laughs> I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> yeah. Jeffrey, what was it like working with Frank Darabont and John Bernthal? It's great. I love them both, comfortable with both of them, communicate easily with both of them. It was great. <laughs> can you tease a little bit of what we can expect for each of your characters? Because you're sort of on both on different sides in the show. Um, well, my character, he's got, you know, he's got, he's got his, some bouts with violence. <laughs> Understand. You know? He's also a nice guy. Um, you'll have a, this, I can't, we can't delve too much into stuff, but I think uh, I think you'll see he's got. By the end, you'll see he's got a nice little arc, and what happens at the end is kind of boom, 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 boom. with Mickey. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you to expect. Uh, he's, a, he's a good cop. Good enough. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> and does he help aid Bill's? Rise, rise, and cement his power. Definitely supports Bill. Oh, okay. Yep, because Bill is a straight shooter, and there aren't many of those around. What separates Mob City from any other gangster story? Um, Frank Darabont. <laughs> Frank Darabont. I mean, you know, I've been part of a lot of. Uh, I'm from New York, so I've been part of a lot of mob stuff. Some of it's good, most of it's shitty. But you know, when you get into like the specifics and somebody who really wants to tell, tell a story and see the human human side to these people that you think are monsters, and just really get into the, the storytelling aspect and make and get specific about what this thing is. And you've never seen a noir television show on ever. I mean, it's like the first time, so it's kind of like we're making. We're making some kind of history here. I mean, it's totally, it's 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 original. It's like nothing anybody has ever done before, which is really cool. What was the most surprising part for you being on Mob City? The most surprising part. This is I, uh, this isn't really surprising, but I enjoyed and discovered as we went on over the weeks that the thing had legs. 
I discovered that the group of strangers that had come together had chemistry. And you know, you don't know. You don't know about the five of us right here. Do we have chemistry and can it work? And to watch that, it was several, we were several weeks into it, I remember, and I said to, to Frank at one point, I said, you know, I want it to go on. I want to do some more seasons of it. I can, I can feel it. We've got something that is starting up here. And I'm sp speaking specifically now only about us in the, in the squad room, only well, the, the cops. Well, the dancers did too. Like, yeah. The cops had, we're starting to get, uh, we had a chemistry that was going on that felt right to me. It didn't feel forced. It didn't feel like that we were really pretending well or anything. We were developing our own way to learn to know. Who can you bump into and, and who do you make sure you take care of and all those things that can happen. So that, it's not really surprising, but it was a good thing to have. Definitely. <laughs> And, uh, well, my, my other question would just be, in terms of the period of it, you know, literally from the opening frame of it, you're really steeped in it, and did you guys experience the same thing when you were shooting? Yeah. It's wonderful. It's really wonderful. Yeah. Especially for me. Yeah. The cars. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, the cars. Coming into a crime scene in those cars. <laughs> yeah, there's oh, something that happens. Oh, right? it's neat. Um, yeah. That's great. Yeah, it was, it's wonderful. And plus our scenic designer, Greg Milton, is yeah, it's it's beyond it. words what he did. It was all beautiful. Yeah. The production, the music, oh, the costumes. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. You saw the first two, right? Two. I saw yeah. the first I watched two. the first two. Yeah. 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 I can't wait yeah. to see more. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. was your so, favorite so, moment from the first two episodes? My favorite moment uh, for me or for my character or yeah, for the for whole your thing? Yeah, for character or for the whole thing. Um, there's this moment where, uh, for, my, for me, it was personally, I, I really liked washing my hands. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> in the club, was like, in the middle of the club. I think it's just so ridiculous that like, <laughs> everybody's just kind of like, oh, well. Um, but, you know, I really get a kick out of Robert Nepper's character, how much of a sociopath he is and when he goes like this and he looks at the thing and he goes like that the contrition and you see his eyeball pop out and so I'm like how do you how are you that weird and creepy what kind of shit do you do like at night to get to this um but that was like that was probably my favorite moment of the the, the first two